Hey, I'm gonna go over the series, um, the about this series. So it just kind of gives an idea about what the series is about. It's called A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. So it goes through a lot of things that this world has that look appealing to all of us. Um, and that they're not necessarily bad, but what we make of them can be bad if we replace these things with pursuing God. Um, we should pursue God instead of these things. Generation Z, who are our kids, um, is unlike any other generation before them. We've already talked about that before. This series is created specifically for them. Not that all series aren't, but this one, I guess, especially. Um, facing the reality that young people are becoming less religious are less likely than ever before to claim a religious identity. They're no longer being raised with a Christian worldview. That doesn't mean that um, they're not being raised at home in a Christian home, but verses a long time ago, like when my parents were raised, and even when I was raised, but in the 80s, it was getting a little, you know, bit away from that, but especially when my parents were raised, everything basically lined up. For example, the world and the church were not so different. For example, the school was godly. Their, most likely their coaches were godly and respected church time instead of having tournaments and activities and work on Sunday. Um, so most of the adults in their life were Christian people. It was rare that, that, that people weren't godly back in the 50s majority of the people were then weren't and so now their coach their teachers their um parents or relatives might have quit going to church so they there it's different and um anyway so it's not like that they might not be raised in a christian home but the outside world who has a huge effect on them um might not be so it, it's hard to combat for us as leaders at church and their parents they are taking on an entirely new approach we should take on an entirely new approach of how we talk about religion and catholic faith before they can care about the, what the church teaches they need to know there is absolute truth and they need to know that god exists before we can get them excited or invested in mass and the sacraments they have to know who jesus is because if they don't know who jesus is then truly personally for themselves and believe in that then how are they going to be so excited and deep in love with the mass because the mass is all about this person that they might not be close to. Um, this Life Night series will be full of Catholic teachings, as always, but have a greater focus on the foundations of our faith and the big questions to what this generation is asking. Basically, where is Jesus in my life? What place does he hold? St. Thomas Aquinas names four primary categories people often use as substitute for God. Wealth, power, pleasure, and status. These four areas are alluring and promise safety and security, but we are, but they are waiting to devour the, us if we trust them too much. Unfortunately, when relying on these goods to comfort us, we forget where we should truly place our trust, and we create substitutes for God rather than trusting Him. How much trust do we put in our wealth? How much trust do we put in power? How much trust do we put in pleasure? 
how much trust do we put in our status or how much do those things matter to us? Throughout this series, we'll take a closer look at each of these substitutes and how they can adversely affect the relationship with God if we're not careful about how we view and use them. The goal of this series is for teens to recognize the four substitutes for God and gain insight on how to be countercultural by choosing Christ-like virtues instead. So, it's not about turning the Titanic around always with these teens. It is about sometimes just getting putting a name on something, getting them to recognize, hey, she's right. Like, I put, or they're right, I put trust in wealth. It makes me feel safe, you know, and I never get enough of it. So, what... What place does God have in that? How prayerful am I about what I spend my money on? How I get my money, you know, and what I do with it. And trust in Him and all those things. So, first night is well. We will have a game that, of course, goes along with the lesson. Um... If any of those subjects speak to you, um, think about this. Not giving a whole 20 minute talk on it, but possibly giving a, a little bit of a story that you might have where you allowed wealth to dominate or you were seeking it, seeking it, seeking it, and you got obsessed with it and um, it was unfulfilling or it, it failed you, or it failed somebody else, or how you don't put your faith in that, and how and why. Um, so any old story, testimony is always memorable for them, rather than a bunch of teaching. We make it personal. Um, when it's personal for us, and it's going to be personal for them, so stories are always good. So... Teaching on wealth, um, then the break in this packet, it has questions about, you know, small group questions on that. But one thing I wanted to encourage y'all to do is, is possibly think of this series when you're thinking about what you want to do for Lent. Um, if it's giving up something to do with these wealth, pleasure, power, status. Um, pleasure might be, you know, social media that is a temporary happiness that takes away from our lives that can, we could replace that time with spending time with people or spending time with God. Um, you know, I'm going to take away the 15 minutes that I spend on Instagram today and pick up a devotional book from Barnes and Noble. And if you do that yourself, then that's going to overflow with these teens. You have stuff to talk about, about your own personal faith life. And y'all are role models for these teens, whether you think you are or not. And, um, and they listen and they take it to heart. They've put trust in you. And they've gained a relationship with you. And their relationship with you is where they're going to see Jesus first. So we have to be connected to him in order to minister to them. So, okay. Uh, we talked about in the meeting the time frame of small group. Everybody agreed that 745 7 to 7.45 is a good amount of time to spend, and everybody agreed that, that they liked gathering back up together for a prayer at the end. So that is what we will do. The next night, the second night, is a team night, March 8th, but I don't care if it's a team night or not. I need the small group leaders. I need y'all to kind of look through this whole packet because 
everybody, team leader, small group leader, whatever you do, I need you to be familiar with this series because it needs to be ingrained in our lives outside of Wednesday night because this helps us. I mean, if y'all don't have a daily devotional outside of mass, this is your devotional. Let it be your food for your own spiritual life. It's so good. I mean, it's relevant to us, relevant to me as much as anything. Study this. This is a great devotional. So March 8th is about power. Um, the teaching and the, you know, the questions and team leaders. Um, I know that y'all are supposed to do a little devotion and prayer before you start teams. I would suggest taking these break questions as your devotional. Even if it's 10 minutes at the beginning of teams, pray and give them a little bit, you know, and do those questions. Um, Pick one question, even if it just think about it. They don't have to respond. They might, they might not. But just one question, what do you like having control over and why would be great. The next one is pleasure. This is a small group night, March 22nd. Um, the break and the send this night will be in the CLC. We will do a thing called Four Corners. Um, this is something that we do at Catholic Heart Work Camp. Uh, there will be adoration, there will be confession, and there will be small group leaders. I want y'all to be um, on the perimeter of the room. And what we're gonna do is allow the kids a chance to be prayed over by you. So we'll tell the kids, your small group leaders are here, they are waiting, and Please go to them if there's anything that you would like for them to pray with you about. And um, at this time, it's not about us counseling them, providing them advice, you know, fixing all their problems. It's just a time for us to fully listen to everything they're saying. Just listen and then pray for them. That's it. And so... Um, that's what we're going to do March 22nd. March 29th is a team night. Again, small, uh, again, team leaders. Um, there are discussion questions and just read over them. Uh, why do you think people often seek recognition? What is something you want to receive recognition for when you do it? Um, simple, simple, you know, for me, it's like when I cook supper, I would love to hear somebody say, this is so good. Um, and thank you or something. I mean, that's simple, but what do we want to seek recognition for? It might be at work. Nobody ever notices that I do this and I would like recognition for it or something, you know, whatever it is. So. I sent the rest of the schedule to y'all. Love you. Thanks. Bye.